Okay, so at this point we learned quite a bit about cost functions for regression and now we are ready to touch upon a very vast and important topic which is uh, cost functions for binary classification. Binary classification case is extremely important. It arises in practice time and again and a lot of practitioners out there have to deal with the case of binary classification. Why? Well, quite frankly, this is because this is where usually where the money is. Now, the binary classification would be, for example, a situation when you need to predict a specific outcome that can only take two distinct values, yes and no, uh, positive or negative, uh, zero, one. Uh, for example, you might be interested in identifying fraudulent transactions if you're working for a financial institution or you might be interested in understanding who's going to respond to a direct mail campaign. So in this case, you either have a responder or non-responder. Or in the biotech research, you might be interested who is going to respond positively to a drug treatment or who is going to die within a certain time frame uh, versus survive. So the binary classification is a very fundamental case. And in spite of its kind of... Uh, simplicity, you're only dealing with a binary outcome, uh, there is a proliferation of different approaches to work with it, to interpret it, and also to construct cost functions. So in the next few videos, this is what we, are, we will try to accomplish here. So let's get going and uh, see where it leads us. First, I will introduce binary classification. Uh, on a somewhat formal setting. Well, first of all, observed response Y, in this case, takes only two possible values. Uh, one will be called positives, the other one will be called negatives. Again, the way we call these positives or negatives is just a convention. And the point is that whenever you approach a binary classification problem, you need to decide what your positives are going to be. I mean, it could be, it has nothing to do with being positive in life. So, for example, positive could be the event of death of a certain condition, or positive would be uh, the fraudulent transaction that's been identified, and so on and so forth. But we need to be absolutely sure what positives are and what the interpretation is. Now, we need to define the relationship between... Uh, the response surface h of x and our binary outcome y. Now to help you understand in general what's going on, let's look at the data set structure again. Here is a symbolic representation of my data set, which is usually a flat file that has these uh, individual observations here. Uh, so these are so these are my axes. I also have observed Ys, which in the case of binary classification are coded as either positives or negatives. Okay. Now, a machine learning algorithm is going to construct some kind of response surface H of X, which is a real valued function of the, uh, defined in the feature space X. What it means is that somehow I'll get a set of values, h1, h2, h3, and so on. Now, later on, we may learn about different ways to construct the response surface, but at the very least, it can always be constructed by running, say, simple linear regression, which is what I'm going to illustrate here. Suppose you have a, a, a univariate data set, so there's only one uh, dimensional feature vector x. Suppose x is exposure to some kind of harmful agent and uh, y in this case will be coded 1.0 on positives and 0 on negatives. And now suppose that positive means that uh, the instance that after the lifetime of exposure to certain harm harmful agent uh, you, uh, a person has acquired some type of cancer. So what usually happens in this case is the higher the exposure, the higher the probability that you are going to get that event, right? So what we're usually doing here is something like that. So the density of positive events 
uh, is going to rise as we're moving to the right. Likewise, the density of uh, negative events, which in this case meaning no cancer, is going to be high at the lower exposure levels, and then eventually it's going to kind of drop down. Okay, so now I could take the data set, code Y is zeros and ones, and fit a regression line, for example, that goes like this, that essentially tries to fit the observed values of zeros and ones. Now, it can always be done, and of course, this is probably not the best way to approach this situation. Later on, we will learn about more elaborate approaches. But the point is that you always have access to this function h of x, somehow. So the next question becomes, how do we use that function in order to make our predictions? And what usually is done is uh, uh, we introduce a so-called decision rule presented here. And the decision rule is always controlled by a user-specified threshold. So basically, we're saying, in order to make our prediction as either a plus, positive, or a negative, we are going to choose a specific value of a threshold such that whenever the response surface exceeds that user-specified threshold, I'm going to make a positive prediction. Otherwise, I'll make a negative prediction for my response variable. Now, on this graph, the threshold could be set here. So that's my T. So if you go here, for instance, it kind of goes this way. And what it means is that whenever say if I kind of illustrate it like this so whenever X exceeds my threshold I'm going to make a positive predictions for my response Y so whenever my H of X so this is the H of X which in this in this case is a straight line when H of X exceeds the threshold so in this area here I'm going to make a positive prediction. In this area here, I'm going to predict negative prediction. Meaning what? All of these records will be correctly classified, but these two records will be misclassified as positives. Likewise, all of these records will be correctly classified as zeros, except for these two, which will be misclassified as zeros, where in fact they are positives. And that's the typical scenario that you have to deal with in binary classification. We call it the case when uh, the classes are not fully separable from each other, and there's always a, some kind of compromise that has uh, to be achieved in, in order to decide how you're going, you're going to balance correct classifications in one class, versus another. And again, from the data point of view, you simply calculate values of your response surface here, uh, then apply the given threshold, and that will allow you to calculate predicted responses, which we call y hat, that are going to look like this, depending on what, what the threshold is all about. And notice there will be different types of events. So you can have a positive, correctly predicted as positive, or you could have it incorrectly predicted as negative and the other way around. And those are the most important considerations that we're going to exercise here. So to summarize, in to handle binary classification, when, whenever we construct a response surface H of X, then in order to make the actual prediction, we need to introduce a threshold. And depending on the, what the threshold has being, is being used, we're going to, to come up with one way or another to classify positives and negatives. So in the next slide, in the next video, we're going to expand our understanding of what I've just described here and try to convert it into some kind of numeric measures of performance.